Hey everybody, welcome back to HPC Tech Shorts, where every week we take you to the water cooler here in HPC Engineering at AWS and talk to some of the interesting technologists and software engineers and architects who are producing uh, some cool things that hopefully makes uh, HPC in the cloud a better place. Uh, this week, I'm happy to say we're joined by Austin Cherian in Singapore. Hey, Austin. Hey, Brennan. Welcome. Thanks for having me on the show. Welcome to Tech Shorts. So, um, uh, for everybody else's sake, Austin is uh, Austin's one of our senior engineers in the developer relations team here in HPC Engineering, uh, and he is the one who is most obsessed with HPC performance. So here, Austin last week was one of the first uh, blog posters on our new uh, HPC blog um, on the AWS website. So uh, this is a new blog. There were four posts, I think, last week. There's going to be, you'll keep seeing posts week after week talking about lots of different topics. But last week, uh, Austin authored one about Gromax performance, and he was talking about the, you know, the results that, that he got from testing Gromax on a bunch of different EC2 instances. Uh, glad to give uh, a first-hand experience of how actually we ran Parallel Cluster for running the Gromax workloads that we actually wrote the blog on last week, basically. Yeah. 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 And, and um, I mean, there's so many, there's so many variables there. So let's, um, here, let me just get my, get the right mouse up. Um, this is sort of like a, here's a high level architectural view of parallel cluster. And for, for folks who aren't, well, maybe only somewhat familiar with parallel cluster, parallel cluster produces a canonical Beowulf cluster, you know, and it's, you know, you've got a head node, you've got a bunch of compute nodes. The difference in the cloud, of course, is that the compute nodes is like an elastic group of, of compute nodes, of, of virtual machines, uh, and we can expand and contract that, that compute fleet at our whim, right? And so yeah. uh, that, could be, that could mean a scheduler running on the head node actually dynamically expands the cluster to make it fit the size of the, of the jobs that are coming in the queue. But then we also put a few neat things into parallel cluster like DCV. Uh, and if we get yep. time, hopefully we'll get, you know, Austin's going to show us how DCV works uh, in this context too. DCV is like our high performance visualization um, tool that lets you have a desktop on a cluster, which is another thing that you can't really do uh, in many other places. You can't, you know, it's not easy to just have a desktop view on a cluster. Uh, most administrators yep. are going to let you. Um, uh, spin up, uh, spin up a, a windowing environment on a on an HPC cluster. Swap desktops. There you go. Over to you. That's good. All right. So this is uh, this seems very familiar, I guess, to a, a lot of folks. Typical uh, sh uh, shell session, and uh, you know, as I mentioned, Parallel Plus is already installed. So if everything is uh, installed pretty well, if you run p uh, cluster list. Uh, you should actually see all the clusters that that Parallel Cluster created, right? So I've actually created about three or four clusters over here, uh, and I've created uh, multiple versions of them just to give you a flavor of uh, each of these things. Now let's right, go into. This is, you're running yeah. you're, the P cluster command you're running here is just on your could be on your desktop where you've Absolutely. got Linux installed. It could be, but, it, but but this isn't the actual machine where the clusters are running. This is just exactly. the machine where the tool is running, right? Exactly. So Parallel Cluster yeah. is actually running, as I mentioned, on a client, could be a desktop. Uh, in this case, it's an EC2 machine, but it could very well be installed on a desktop and you can run from there. And it could be a Windows as well, uh, not just Linux. Um, the, uh, the, the interesting bit over here is that um, uh, wherever you've installed Parallel Cluster, uh, you can actually control all of the clusters that you create from that one single point, right? And so as you can see over here, we have multiple clusters uh, you know, that we have created. Uh, there's a bunch of commands that are interesting about parallel cluster. One is parallel cluster list, as you can see over here, just lists, uh, lists all the uh, clusters that, are, that you actually created. Uh, and then there's parallel cluster stop, which stops the compute fleet, which are going to actually use over here, and parallel cluster update, which is actually going to update an existing cluster. That is something that I'm going to show you as well. So let's go into uh, some of the nitty gritties of like what it takes to create one of these clusters. So we start with a configuration file, right? Uh, this configuration file could also be created by using parallel cluster configure. So p cluster configure uh, actually gives you a menu-driven menu approach to create your parallel cluster configuration. 
And a parallel cluster configuration is uh, nothing but uh, the starting point of all the configuration that you require for a specific cluster. So let's open one of these files, right, real quick. So I have over here uh, multiple configurations file. I'm going to just open one of them. Right? Um, and to you know, begin with, uh, right from the top, you can just look at uh, what this configuration file you know contains. But I'm just going to point to some of the specifics that are interesting. So uh, as uh, any cluster requires a master node, we we define the instance for the master node. So that's over here. Uh, we've taken a C five X large, which is uh, pretty decent uh, for a master node. Again, the master node is only going to run a scheduler. It's not going to run anything else. But yeah. it is it's a be, point where. Exactly. It's it's a point where all of your probably all of your software is actually installed, all of your applications are actually installed, right? Um, and again, uh, if you want to write read and write freely to an to all of the S3 buckets, right? You can just give uh, star, and you can basically get access to all of the S3 buckets that you have in your account. Um, you can define things like the uh, the the root volume size of the master node, as you can see over here. You can also look at uh, the the various different queues uh, that I mentioned over here. So I uh, I have over here multiple different queues, but we're going to actually use these queues to uh, you know uh, update them as we progress, right? Um, and uh, a few of the things around queues, right? So what is a queue? A queue is like you would have used in your environment uh, probably presently. It's defining a certain type of architecture of uh, for a machine. For example, in this queue. I have a uh, single node instances, which means that I've taken a C5 24x large as a single node. Um, and uh, incidentally, C5 24x large happens to be the best price performance for Gromax when you run it in a single node configuration mm. uh, that you can actually see on the paper uh, that we released, the blog post that we released last week. Um, I can actually uh, kind of put some guardrails around over here. Um, and the guardrails are uh, things like max. Uh, number of uh, instances that you can create in this, uh, you know, is as in this queue, uh, and so on and so forth, right? So you you have some mechanism to actually create these guardrails, uh, and of course you can learn more about uh, you know uh, some of these things uh, in detail in the HPC uh, workshop, Parallel Cluster workshop that we have as well. We'll put that in the links as well for this video. Right. The sort of working backwards in a way, it's it's worth. I, I just want to comment on the fact that. Um, you know, in most in most people's HPC sites, they'll have a queue that will be mapped onto a physical hardware set. Like it might be yes. the the queue for FAT nodes, uh, you know, which are high memory nodes, or it might be the queue for the GPU nodes. Yeah. In the in the cloud context, when you create a queue, you sort of it's you're sort of working the other way around. You're saying, look, you know, I need a uh, I I need some instances which are high memory. Um, yep. So I'm going to create the queue before I even have the instances, and the instances get created yes. later. So it sort of reverses that process in a way. Anyway, it's just, yes. a, it's just a, a difference that's always always interesting to highlight. Um, yep, absolutely. Yeah. So you know, you're actually creating uh, uh, the queue over here, and you're actually defining that queue. Um, and again, you know, these queues could be multiple different types of queues. You could have a queue for a spot instance. You could have a queue for uh, scaling instance, so on and so forth. We're going to now progressively do that over here. I'm going to show you how we went through the process of actually running this uh, the Gromax benchmark. So we start off with uh, a very typical uh, cluster. Let's say it's got just uh, one single queue, right? So I'm just going to delete this real quick over here. And this is what it's uh, basically uh, going to look like, just a single queue, uh, just having uh, you know only a single node type of instance, right? Uh, and the way you um, essentially uh, the way you essentially, um, sorry, my caps lock is actually on. <laughs> yeah. So the <laughs> way you essentially look at, um, yeah, you know, creating a, a cluster is p cluster create, uh, and you give hyphen c, and then you give the configuration file, right? And that's about it, right? So configuration file dot i and I'm not going to kick this off because I've already done it, um, yeah. uh, and it takes about about eight, six to eight minutes to create a parallel cluster typically, but once you have it, it's all ready to go. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Six to eight minutes to actually give birth to an HPC cluster. I used exactly. to take about a, it used to take you and I about a year to do that when we work for a hardware company. Um, Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And uh, to, you know, if, if I remember correctly, it takes about six months to stabilize the cluster itself, right? So we're talking about like four <laughs> months to install the physical cluster and another two months to actually stabilize it. 
Uh, and progress. over here, progress. <laughs> exactly. Imagine this: you can actually have a full-blown HPC cluster with visualization, with FSx for last for last luster, all uh, you know, in a matter of minutes. That's like that's great, yeah. basically, right? Um, yeah. And once you've set up this cluster. Now you can actually log into it, right? So P cluster list uh, will show you some of the clusters I've created over here. And let's go to one, uh, the first cluster over here, right? The amazing thing is you can actually log into the cluster using parallel cluster itself. Uh, it can actually start an SSH session for you, right? So P cluster SSH. And let's uh, look at uh, test cluster one uh, and give hyphen I. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to log into that uh, to the master node of that uh, cluster that we had uh, just seen, and mm -hmm. uh, the way we do that is using P cluster SSH as I mentioned earlier. Um, once you're in the cluster, you could actually run all of the commands like s info, for example. As I mentioned, we've already had the Slurm scheduler installed, and so we right. can actually now uh, see the job queues uh, that are there. So here we have a single node job queue. Um, and just a uh, uh, you know matter of interest over here is uh, when you install uh, Gromax, for example, you could actually install Gromax from uh, by using SPAC. So SPAC is a great open source project to actually install the Gromax uh, application or any other scientific uh, code that you you know desire. Uh, they have yeah, a list. We're being uh, to SPAC here. Exactly. Yeah, and um, you know it takes a couple of days. Uh, you know, for sometimes when I first installed Gromax, it took me a day, a day and a half. And with Spac, it's in a matter of minutes. So I've installed Spac over here, but I'm not going to go through the full install. But to just show you the power of you know actually quickly using Spac to install something, all I need to do is Spac install Gromax. That's just the three. And that uh, literally pull Gromax from the, for, pull, pull Gromax at all of its dependencies out of the SPAC exactly. repos, get the recipe and build the whole thing. That's exactly. I I'm still sorry. think it's 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 dark magic that that Todd and the guys in the in the SPAC team have, have created. <laughs> exactly. Amazing. Exactly. It's 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 pretty cool. Um, and and this right. way you so can let's, actually let's install a lot of packages. Let's yeah, kick sure. off a job or two. Yeah. Sure. So um, let's uh, let's now go into Gromax, which I've already installed, and uh, you know, essentially the benchmark that I'm going to use today is Ribosome. Um, some of you might be mm -hmm. familiar with it. Uh, I'm going to use the binary, uh, you know, input file over here, uh, which has basically got the coordinates as well as uh, you know the other information required to run the benchmark. Uh, and let's have a look at the submission uh, script uh, real quick, right? So. Just to show you what it contains, uh, again, it's a, a 10,000 step uh, benchmark, basically. So it's 10,000 time, time steps running on one single node, each node having 48 cores, which is a C5 um, 24x large machine that we're using. Mm -hmm. And it's basically simply an NPR run command uh, with the benchmark name at the end of it, right? Um, so what I'm actually using um, uh, essentially OpenMPI over here. And OpenMPI actually comes with Parallel Cluster. So the interesting thing about Parallel Cluster is that you already have a module environment uh, ready for you. So if you give module AV, you can actually see uh, all the, uh, you know, essentially all the tools that are already installed with the module environment. And we have actually wow. provided uh, OpenMPI and Intel MPI. So you can actually use yeah. either of these. Today, I'm going to use uh, OpenMPI, basically, for the run. So um, so just to just so to get the run started, as batch, which is the Slurm command to uh, you know start a batch job, and then submission script. And that's it. Our job is actually now in the queue. So if you give SQ, um, you can actually see the job. And the CF status uh, over here actually means that it's actually trying to get the compute nodes uh, from the environment now. Auto scaling is actually, uh, you know, kind of kicked off in the back end, and it's actually getting the compute nodes for you. So that let when that, you were uh, doing when you were doing your like exploration to try and work out which instance was the fastest instance type. Yes, you were you were essentially working in this kind of environment, but you you might have had right. I don't know you were you played with like half a dozen different instance types and very everything from like exactly. you know M five C five um, yep. even some you know some C five ends and some and some ARM-based instances with a graviton. So you just That's had right. multiple single single node queues, each one with exactly. a slightly different flavor, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, so, so this the would idea take is... you 
you could quite literally, you could have six different queues open with six yep. different instance types and run the same job in six different yes. queues. Yep, exactly. Just, That's exactly what so I did. So exploring that yep. space is really easy. Absolutely. Definitely. And the, the interesting thing is you can actually automate on top of that because everything is scripted. You can actually write automation on top of that to create, uh, to run jobs across all of these queues and figure out the best uh, job in terms of, you know, well, which, uh, which job ran fastest. And then you can just uh, kind of exactly see the run times and things like that and then go back. And, and then, then delete the other five queues because they're no use to you anymore exactly. and just keep the one. That, <clears throat> this is fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I, that's exactly what I did uh, mm. to get to the right instance time. Of course, uh, I knew uh, depending on the domain knowledge that, you know, we need an instance with high core count and, so, uh, you know, not very high frequency to core ratio and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, you know, you, you get what I'm saying. Uh, essentially yeah. getting to the right instance quicker, but using multiple instance types uh, as an experiment, essentially. Yeah. So let this job kind of kick off and it's already kicked off. Uh, let it let it continue. Uh, if you want to actually have a look at the job itself. So again, run SQ. Uh, it's still trying to get the compute nodes, but it'll get it and then it'll run. Yeah. Uh, and let's exit. And now I'm going to show you how to add queues. So we had this cluster, which had just a single queue. But now let's look at how to add a queue to this cluster, right? Um, and so if you look at uh, you know one of these configurations file uh, configuration files again, uh, you could just basically look at uh, adding more queues. Um, and as you can see over here, all you need to do to add two more queues uh, over here is to just um, put a comma and then uh, give the queue names. Uh, uh, I've actually added a spot queue and a scaling queue over here. Uh, a spot yep. queue is great for instances that require you know just uh, a limited amount of time to run, and so you can actually mm -hmm. uh, take advantage of the spot market, get an instance, uh, run it maybe for an hour or two, get your job done, and then you know exit out quickly because uh, that instance might not be alive for many hours, uh, which might be a requirement for the scaling queue, which is what you need right. uh, if you want to scale out your run basically. So, so if you're doing, say, ensemble runs where you've got thousands of jobs or hundreds of jobs doing a parameter sweep even, you could, yes. you could totally run them inside inside a spot environment like this, taking yep. your chances that occasionally you're going to get interrupted and lose some resource, but but the savings are worth it over the, Absolutely. Over the scale. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Uh, and we call that out, right? So essentially we can go, go to like 60 to 70 to 80% in savings when you use spot instances. And that's yeah. basically what you need to do when you get to production. So experimentation is fine, but when you actually get to running these ensemble jobs, or long scaling jobs, you want to actually look at cost optimization because that's what's going to uh, you know get your bill uh, down at the end of the month, basically. Uh, and right. so that's why spot is as so uh, it's as simple as just uh, adding a spot queue. Uh, and the definition of these queues, as you can see over here, for example, the spot queue, uh, as I'm just highlighting it, uh, all you need to do is just say that the compute type is spot. Uh, I'm actually you can actually put in configuration like disabling of hyper threading as well. So that's uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, disable hyper threading through. Uh, so you yeah. might do this for Gromax single instance. You probably don't want to disable hyper threading, uh, but there are applications where you need to do it. Um, and uh, and off you go. That's about it. Um, same thing for the scaling queue as well. Uh, in the scaling so queue, so literally though, you just create you you give the give the queue a name. You create an upper right. bound and a lower bound on the number of instances that are ever going to be in the queue, and then yes. just and an instance type and and in the case of spot you just say hey it's spot okay exactly this all, exactly this all makes sense. yeah exactly and for the scaling queue though it's a uh, you know you can you need to choose an instance with EFA and uh, we'll have probably another session to show you what exactly EFA can do we will probably talk yep. about this later as well uh, in the perf performance uh, tech shot that we're going to come out with but uh, here's an instance here's the queue which has C5 and 18 x large which is EFA enabled instance basically. So once that once we have these queues, uh, the way we update is p cluster update, um, and uh, you give the cluster name. So test uh, cluster uh, one, uh, and then hyphen c, and then uh, your modified uh, file. Right. So I'm not going to run this command, but once you run this command, it starts updating uh, in the background. And once the update is finished, you end up with a new cluster, basically. Um, and that cluster has the exact configuration that you put in. Um, that's just brilliant because imagine again, Brendan, I can see the <laughs> smile on your face. If you had to do this with a physical cluster, 
the, seriously yeah. <laughs> how many uh, how many, how many days yeah. did you and i spend on conference calls <laughs> working on those <laughs> clusters <laughs> exactly exactly right so yeah. this is just amazing that uh, what you can do today essentially just update the cluster and it's a stable cluster once it comes back with these new type of instances that you can use basically yep absolutely um, Yep, yep. And, right, and so that been... means that you can go on to start to explore the the multi-node environment. So you're, you know, with those yes. with those additional queues, you can start to explore how Gromax performs across multiple different nodes. You know, in yes. in multiple different cases. I get it. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I'm just going to quickly run P cluster list to see uh, the name of that cluster which I had created earlier. So it's uh, Gromax Bench. And I'm just going to log into the master node of that cluster, which has multiple queues. So we are now that in uh, in the in the cluster which has multiple queues. So if I run S info mm -hmm. over here, you will actually see three queues now, right? So the first queue is a single node queue, the second one is a spot queue, and the third node third is a scaling queue over here. And uh, again, you can just um, <clears throat> start off a benchmark, right? So I'm just going into running a benchmark. I've already done a four node benchmark. Uh, and uh, just want to give you an idea of what that four node benchmark looks like when it's run. Uh, mm -hmm. Once the results are in, uh, you just uh, give ls and then your result file is uh, over here, right? So it's uh, dot out. And you can actually open the result file and then basically go through the results, which I'm not going to go through right now. Um, but uh, in general, uh, just a point over here is that once you install a cluster, you actually get a shared folder, essentially. So if you go to slash shared, you actually get a shared folder which is act, which is visible across all the compute nodes in the cluster essentially and if you mm -hmm. if you actually installed luster as well by the way which is a couple of lines that you add to your configuration yeah. file which is again amazing uh, yeah. <laughs> imagine standing up a luster file system in the physical world um, and then getting it to stay uh, stability uh, it's just brilliant that you can actually have luster as well so i think i have already installed luster uh, let me yep. see if it's there. Oh, it's right here. So here's a Luster file system for you, right? The Luster file system is actually synced to an S3 bucket, which means that all my files in that S3 bucket are actually present, or basically the metadata is present in Luster. And if I grab something from the Luster file system over here, it does something called as lazy loading. And we'll get into that some uh, in detail in another tech shot, basically. Yeah. So, uh, so with that, uh, I've now got a cluster with three queues. I can do my production runs now. Uh, a look at cost optimization as well with spot queues and long scaling runs with uh, the you know the the multi node queues for example and and keep going that way and that's basically what I did to actually get those runs done for that blog post that came out last week essentially and uh, again here is uh, the interesting bit uh, adding a luster file system and adding DCV is just these many lines in your configuration <laughs> file how cool is that. Right. Uh, <laughs> imagine doing this in the physical world again. Yeah. So, so uh, I've just with with just four file lines, I've added a 1.2 terabyte uh, Luster file system, and yep. uh, I've actually enabled DCV for visualization. Right. That, that's all it takes. Now, once just you for have the, just for the sake of yeah. it, uh, it, you know, we could go we could go from 1.2 terabyte Luster file system to 1.2 petabyte Luster file system. Oh yeah. We're just changing a few command line, uh, a, a couple of items in this file, and rerunning the the update. Those Absolutely. file systems, you know, the, the Lustre file systems are capable of doing tens or hundreds of gigabytes a second. I mean, that it yeah. it scales. It's it, this is this is not a toy. This is a real the real deal. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And all, and as you as you can see, I've actually just given the size of the file system, right? But you can look at performance as well. So you can actually specify size and performance and things like that. And yeah. um, uh, you can actually link this Luster file system to an S3 bucket, which is what I've done over here. So all my files in the S3 bucket appear in my Luster file system automatically, essentially, which is pretty cool. So cool. Yep. And uh, so let's look at uh, DCV. So once you uh, once a DCV is already installed and everything's running fine, uh, you can actually uh, pop up the DCV uh, you know uh, client that looks something like this, and you can actually yep. connect to it. So I'm going to log into this DCV session. And this uh, is essentially uh, the master, the visualization of the master node of one of the compute clusters, basically. right? 
Uh, and uh, uh, the idea over here is uh, simply for the fact that, you know, once you finish your simulation, let's say you want to do some visualization, you can visualize the master node and you can actually run tools like VMD. So I'm just going to quickly run VMD over here, right? So VMD is a popular visualization, uh, you know, tool for molecular dynamics. And uh, I'm going to load a, uh, a file, which is basically ribosome, uh, which is the benchmark that we actually ran today. Uh, so let me just do that quickly. Uh, okay, let me see if I can actually get to the file. Yes, I can. Right. And that's, uh, there you have it. That is uh, ribosome. That's the actual, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, the, the the workload that we actually ran today uh, in, uh, in uh, you know, in some of the examples that we did uh, starting and creating the cluster. And this incidentally is also the benchmark that is uh, done for the blog post last uh, last week. So this is amazing. So in a little over 25 minutes, we've done single node, multi node, we've done spot queues, we've showed off FSX for Luster, and um, we've showed off DCV using high performance desktop cloud visualization right to the desktop of a cluster in the cloud. Uh, yep. And we could do all of that in a few minutes. So we've done all of that in about 20 minutes or so. Yep. You could, you could, I mean, this is, this, this is, this underscores the fact that uh, my belief that the most important thing that the, the that the cloud can do in HPC is to make the people who are using HPC stuff super productive. If you've got some more thoughts uh, on what we should be covering in these shows in the future, please find us on Twitter. Our DMs are open. Uh, absolutely come and suggest new ideas to us and we'll see what we can do to fit it into the schedule. Um, uh, but for now, Austin, thanks for coming along. Um, yep. No and uh, we'll, we'll actually, we're going to see you back here pretty soon because we're going to be doing another sure. tech short quite soon about uh, about the Gromax performance results. And we're going to be talking to some of the developers from Gromax themselves. Bye.